Hello, and welcome to Who Are You? We're the Babylon 5 watchcast by a couple of former strangers, now friends, who are continuing to get to know each other over one of their favorite shows from their childhood, Babylon 5. I'm Laura. And I'm Jafer. And today, we're wrapping up one of our favorite bits. Hello. Oh, I deal myself in. Yeah. It's the last time we're going to be able to do plot poker. Yeah, I think so. uh, Because crusade (laughs) cards are non-existent on the internet, and even the Wheel of Fire cards that might have some of the crusade people in it are like $400 a box for some reason. No (laughs) thanks. I... If I have four hundred dollars to spend on a minute and a half of my life, yeah, I have other other ways I'm spending that four hundred dollars. No, I'm not at that point yet. Sorry, <laughs> listener. No, no. <laughs> now, if one of you wants to become a patron <laughs> and spend four hundred dollars on a bit, go right ahead. <laughs> we have to get a Patreon set up and stuff soon. There will be things eventually, eventually, listener, but hopefully we're we're working out details. Right. But but for right now, it's just us. And uh, we've got some packs to open. The last Babylon 5 packs we may ever open. Yeah, from the Severed Dreams box. Yeah. I'm sure we will find some. I know the Battlestar Galactica had cards. Oh, did so it? Hooray. We might be able to resurrect this bit later. Oh, I got a Delenn! Ah, what a great one to open on this episode where yeah. she's barely in it. <laughs> it's like OG Delenn, too. It's like full Mimbari Delenn. I have Jane, who is a, clearly an ISN reporter, but I'm trying to remember if she is like, is she the one that... She's one of the good ones, Yeah, I think, I think she's the one that like comes back on when they're being taken over or something. I don't remember exactly. Oh, I got a fun one. Yeah. I got a card called Now He's Ready, and it's Veer holding a sword at the drowsy. Uh, <laughs> now he is ready, yeah. Off pod, I showed Jafar my fancy box that I got for all my cards. The thing I didn't mention, yeah. Jafar, was that I went through like all of the cards I have and was sorting them into like categories. <laughs> yeah. Like the categories for the game? Uh, Sort of. Some of them I was like, well, going by color. And then some of them I was just like putting my aliens together, whether or not they were that color type. So like all my Centauri are together and that kind of thing. All right. Do you have an intention of doing something with these cards? Nope. (laughs) I just really like to organize the thing sometimes. It's a great hyper focus. Oh, the last Alondo's Wives. Lady Dagon. Mm. Oh, I got nuking uh, Sicily. <laughs> That's going to go under solutions. I got nuclear bluff, which is definitely going in my solutions. Ah. I got one of the auxiliary questions. Why are you here? Oh, nice. I got attache Koto. Have we ever seen oh, hey. that? I don't think I've seen... We I think we've had a Veer yeah, card. Yeah, but I don't think... I think I've never seen one that just said attache, Koto. Yeah. Well, I mean, when you're doing enough sets, you got to make versions of these characters, right? And it's, like, easy. Like, oh, Delenn transformed. Know what that uh-huh. one is. President Sheridan instead of Captain. Like, you got stuff like that. But what do you do with Veer? I guess Ambassador Veer could be a card. That's true. He's been promoted. What do we got here? A Zathras who was, instead of a Zathras with an apostrophe in a different place, they found another way to get another Zathras in. I drew a card from today's episode. Yeah? I have anti psi training. Look at this guy. Oh, hey. Does he look familiar? (laughs) Yeah. All right. I'm on to my last pack. Get yeah. those crinkles in. I just, I, I did mine. I got Trachus. Is this the guy from the MMA episode? I think so. Yeah. It looks like him, at least. I also have an Attache Koto. Nice. Okay, Jafar, tell me about our A-plot. So we're going to focus on Veer for our A-plot, 
which is fun because our problem is it's the day of the oh, dead. No. So uh, <laughs> we're going back and revisiting this event. I'm not saying this isn't a second one uh, for some reason. I think they even tell us it's like once every thousand right. years or yeah, something. Yeah, this has got to be multiple um, days of points so, of view. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so this, we're just getting Veer's day on the Day of the Dead and who visits him as our A plot. And it's going to be that Centauri that he was betrothed to that was a total racist piece oh, of shit. Oh, Lindisty? She's dead now? Yeah. Yeah, he didn't even know. Okay. And she comes to visit him on the Day of the Dead. He finds out that she's dead this way. Wow. Um, And we're going to say that like it was something grotesque. Like it will say it was uh, something from Cartagia, like had her like beheaded or something wow. like because she looked at him the wrong way or questioned him or some shit. Yeah. Right? It, we want to we want to gather sympathy for her. Mm, and, and she was pretty unsympathetic the last time we left her. <laughs> yeah, because we want Veer to be like, hi, uh, what the fuck are you doing here? Not even aware of like that the day of the dead is happening because he doesn't know that she's dead. Yeah. Right. So as an audience, we know that she's dead because we know what else is because this is after, you know, like it's the it's, it, we, it's the episode after hypothetically. Mm -hmm. So we know the day of the dead is going on. We see the Procuri merchant at the start of the episode, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so we know this is the same day. We know that Veer is seeing a dead person, but Veer doesn't know that he's seeing a dead person until maybe two thirds of the way through this oh, episode. Yeah. Nice twist. Um, yeah. And so that's a fun little use of dramatic irony that we get as an audience who is aware. Um, and it's mostly just, you know, them talking and stuff. And she in afterlife has realized what a terrible person she was um, and has some regrets. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> we find towards the end of the episode that she is redeemed. She has realized that all of these things are trauma from her parents being terrible people during the occupation and that she was raised in this terrible way. And she learns all of these things when she has the broader experience of being dead or maybe just before her death or something, which takes us all the way through the episode. So Veer finds out that she was dead and killed by Cartagia. He's all like, oh, well, that's funny i guess i avenged my betrothed wife on accident yeah. <laughs> um that wasn't really the goal but i did it so that's a thing you know you've been avenged and uh she has also been redeemed by realizing and growing as a person yeah too bad she had to die to do it yeah well you know nobody's the, perfect. the goal is to do that while you're living if at all possible. Ideally. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's a good lesson for Veer, too, because he might see this as a possibility for Londo's future redemption at a point of the story where he is needing that desperately. Mm -hmm. Sure. So there's some fun stuff in there. Uh, and then the twist is actually in after credit scene. Okay. The first and only after credit scene on Babylon 5. Wow. Which is, we find out during the Day of the Dead, Zathras was on the station and hanging out with Zathras. Uh, <laughs> what a fun conversation that must have been. Yeah. About- No one listened to Zathras. How did Zathras die? No one listened to Zathras, obviously. Yeah. Well, well, he died in the past. It's the Zath- It's a Zathras in the modern day is hanging out mm -hmm. with yeah. the Zathras who went back on B4. Right, yeah. yeah. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> okay well you know how babylon 5 likes to sometimes pair up a really serious plot with a, a goofy b plot i think we're yeah. gonna have a little goofs little goofs and fun a little goofs a little in our fun. B plot. all right yeah so the b plot is focused on our brakiri merchant you know that we saw him in the real day of the dead episode selling his sugar yeah. skulls i think it was <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. so maybe we see him right after that moment you know after londo has walked away and he's actually not going to take part in the day in the day of the dead anymore he's going to go down to the zocalo and just be kind of a a missionary Fly on the wall he's going to be kind of a missionary okay. for the day of the dead talking about it and trying to convince people to take part in the day of the dead and as he is 
wandering around the Zocalo, you know, selling his sugar skulls, talking about the Day of the Dead. He happens upon a very mm-hmm. sinister seeming individual, and we know he's sinister because of the music stings. He's okay. got this big case that we as the audience kind of know, hmm, something something in that case. Yeah. And we see shots of him like polishing his weapon and he's working on uh, Oh, one of those. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's he's got, you know, maybe the president in his sights because we're always trying to assassinate someone on Babylon 5, right? Of course. <laughs> And the the Rikiri kind of notices him and, and is following him around and, and figures out what's going on. And so he is able to take out the sniper as he's setting up, as he has caught him in one of the corridors into the Zocalo. With an improvised weapon, he takes him out and hits him. One of his sugar skulls. Mm-hmm. He, like, beans it right <laughs> at his head and makes enough commotion that security comes and catches this sniper guy. So, Oh, that's yeah. fun. Um, but the B-plot ends on this sinister moment. There's a cloud of doom around us as we realize, as security is taking the sniper away, that he is involved with, like, another separatist movement on Earth who is going to be a big problem. All right. So, what do we think of this episode of Babylon 5? Well, I I think we hit this one out of the park. I think this is a good episode. Totally classic. I'd definitely give this a, a four out of five. Yeah, me too. I think we did great. What a yeah, way to go we, out. Good job, us. <laughs> right. Um, actually, you should save your cards and the piles that they're in, the unused okay. ones. When we do our last episode of Babylon 5 coverage when we do our like full show recap after Crusade after everything. Uh-huh. Let's pull out the cards and do one last right. one. That'll be okay. fun. That sounds like fun. Yeah. I mean that episode is in November. So <laughs> Yeah, yeah, good point. <laughs> They'll hang out for a bit. But uh make sure that we don't lose them. Set them aside. I kept mine in their respective we'll piles. Do. And you've got your nice box mm-hmm. now. So Yeah. They'll stay safe. All right. Well, speaking of staying safe, Hmm. hmm, we have Season 5, Episode 20, Objects in Motion. Laura, we have three episodes of Babylon 5 left. I know. (laughs) Well, we technically have two because we have watched this one. We have three left to talk about. Yeah, I know. (laughs) I am the... uh, the 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 pending nature of sleeping in light is weighing heavy on mm-hmm. me then just also like this is around the time that we first started talking 2 years ago about this sure podcast is, yeah so it's just it's a crazy ride it's been it's hard to believe that we're already mm-hmm. we're already yeah, here it is really time weird it's a fickle mistress and you know i do consider you one of my best friends now like same can- yeah. I couldn't have imagined it two years ago. I wouldn't have known. Right. Sitting on Zoom, both in our offices, yeah. just feel like, are we going to, am I going to do a Babylon 5 podcast with a stranger? Yeah. <laughs> and here we, we are. It was well worth it. Mm-hmm. You know, these last couple of episodes, I do remember sleeping in light. I definitely saw sleeping yeah. in light. How could you not? But objects yeah. in motion, and I haven't watched objects at rest yet. But from the, like, recap stuff I read, I don't remember mm-hmm. these two. I think I might not have watched it's, them. Yeah? yeah? I mean, that's entirely possible. Um, you know, they're kind of just set their goodbyes. Mm-hmm. They're, like, just setting stuff up for the future of the universe in a lot mm-hmm. of ways. Um, we'll talk about it when we get to the end. Sure. When we rate the episode, I'm sure. They're kind of awkward episodes. Yes. Well, at the very least, this one is is pretty awkward yeah. in a couple of ways. Um, not necessarily bad ways, but definitely yeah. ways. Yeah. Speaking of awkward, we open as number one comes in on space TSA. Yeah. Didn't clock her is coming back. Sure. Yeah. And her ex is there to vouch for her. Uh-huh. Just walking by. Just, just around. Can you imagine being at customs Seeing your ex getting hassled and then having to go be like, oh, no, they're they're a citizen and vouching for them to get into a country, which Babylon 5 is its own of at this mm-hmm. point. There are some that I would probably just walk away. <laughs> oh, yeah. For 
Sure. Yeah. There's one that I might try uh, to get them arrested. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm sure they deserve it. They do. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I will just, I don't need a story. No. Got your back. No. <laughs> I don't want to, I'm not, not here. I, and I think Zach would do it. So that's the great part. <laughs> <laughs> yes, famous stickler for documentation, Zach Allen. Mm-hmm. It's like, hey, this isn't an Earth passport, you Martian. <laughs> uh, uh, but, you know, it's good to see that Franklin's word is enough to just get her through customs. Sure. <laughs> That's insane. I can't imagine. Famously ethical doctor, Stephen Franklin. <laughs> mm-hmm. Never been a creep once in his Mm -mm. life. It's all right. I'm a doctor. Yeah. But she's not here to see Steven. She's here to see Garibaldi. Dun, dun, dun. Who we cut over to who's retching in his apartment as they arrive. Yeah. The detox continues. Yeah. And we're getting what I think, what I hope, is one last assassination plot to theme. God, we can only hope. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I don't remember if there's one next episode. We're running out of ideas, clearly. Right. It's so hard for me to take Franklin seriously as he's all like, oh, yeah, well, you know, Edgar's was probably planning unknown genocides against who knows what under this Daffy Duck photo in Garibaldi's uh. room. <laughs> he's like talking about real serious heavy shit and Daffy Duck is just like, framed perfectly as like the angel on his shoulder yeah. and i just cannot handle i it. know that we talk a lot of reboot game around here really hoping and wishing for the reboot but again yeah. one final wish maybe final question mark wish for the reboot is i need more like a comedically placed daffy duck in the reboot like put it around <laughs> like in the background in funny ways i need that <laughs> yeah but yeah some fucking suits are willing to kill lease rather than let garibaldi find out their secrets this is actually the assassination plot yeah. right like they don't care about lease taking charge they seem more concerned about garibaldi being involved and finding out their secrets uh, than they do lease being able to find out their secrets yeah yeah that's true this is rude as hell it is rude yeah like we love lease mm-hmm. Clearly, um, as as is well established on this podcast, it's just yeah, can't handle it. Just like <laughs> how how fucking rude this is to her. This uh, I don't know. I I will save my thoughts for the end. I'm just gonna okay. I'm just gonna hang on to it for Fair now. <laughs> Jakar gets mobbed on his way to see Lita, who will be going on his big road trip because fuck it. It seems like I see Jakar seeing Lita and going, she needs to come with me so I can help mm-hmm. her. Mm-hmm. I don't see Lita g- looking at Jakar and going, I need to go with him. Right. <laughs> this is just a way off the station for her. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're just keeping her here in this silly keyhole neckline straight jacket. Like, right. I, I... <laughs> we need a straight jacket, but we want some cleats. Yes. So, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> we can't cover up the goods. <laughs> right the only people the only reason people tune into this show is to see some patricia tallman upper boob clearly <laughs> so <laughs> yeah yeah so she like sees irony in going with jakar and she also sees like business reasons that jakar would want her mm-hmm. right she she's definitely been in this position with a lot of people and originally with jakar that mm-hmm they're all looking at business reasons for being around her. So, of course, she's figured that out. She's she's using those. And Jakar is, like, hurt that she, yeah. like, thinks that he only wants to take her with him for business reasons. And it's like, but Jakar, do you remember yeah. the first episode? <laughs> do you remember, like, four episodes ago when you had a conversation about the first episode? Right. <laughs> Right. I was like, you don't get to be hurt, buddy. Like, she is being very oh, we practical. We never did find out about your pleasure thresholds. Like, fucking come on. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, this is silly. Uh, he needs to at least acknowledge, like, yes, yeah. I have been this gross, too. Like, 
you are correct, yeah. but let's go work it out, you know? <laughs> yeah. That was ridiculous. Just like she's the most she's the most powerful telepath alive. Mm-hmm. Like we don't even have to think or question. Psychor can't fuck with her. Mm-hmm. Like we've seen her fuck with just multiple psychops at the same time, including Bester at this mm-hmm. point. Why isn't she just like going and leading the teeps for Byron or some shit that makes sense for her character? Like she could, I mean, she telepathically removes her fucking handcuffs. Like she's full on telekinetic at this point. It is no longer a question. When mm-hmm. she takes those handcuffs off at the end of this episode, telekinetic. Yep. So it's just like she can do what she fucking pleases. Right. She she is power unbound, right? She could just go to any ambassador's office and fuck with their brain until she has a planet for the telepaths to settle on at this point. That's true. Without question. Yeah. She can make this happen. With a little bit of work and maybe some travel to go see a government of mm-hmm. theirs, she could sit at the Procuri Senate and be all like, well, you're giving the telepath the planet and you're going to leave us the fuck alone and force them all to say yes. Yeah. Like, there is absolutely no reason for her to be on this road trip from her perspective. You know what I want to headcanon in here a little bit? We remember in that episode about drugs, I think Dust was the name? Yes. That Jakar got a bunch of kosh up in his brains in that episode. Give me some hint that because of the way kosh touched him, she wants to go with him because of that kosh touch. Yeah, that's so good. And it's right there. Come on. (laughs) <laughs> oh well done that's good yeah. that's that's it new head cannon mm-hmm. <laughs> you're welcome we cut over to zach allen who he's got his graduation ceremony from the garibaldi homeschool security program and it's a classic we're using the target as bait yeah perfect that's the capstone right there right yeah exactly this is my my thesis and it's going to be you, Garibaldi. You're the bait. <laughs> and you're also the target. So what's the problem? <laughs> <laughs> Typically, you want to use someone besides the target as bait. <laughs> the bait typically runs into problems. Uh, classic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's the circle of life. The show has come full circle. Congratulations. Mm-hmm. The world's most talkative assassin takes out a security guard (laughs) and i just have to say in full honesty if i was in an elevator alone with a complete stranger and they were talking this much what a fucking blessing to just get stabbed (laughs) well you know he's like missing it because he's ignoring this guy so hard he's like god i can't look at him because he'll keep talking and that's how you get the the ship out right (laughs) right (laughs) all part of the plan Mm -hmm. yeah (laughs) <laughs> totally get it. <laughs> so he takes this dude out. They find the body. He grabs the com badge and swaps it for one. We find out. We see him fucking with this com badge, though, the assassin. And what kind of com badge can dial into the system, get like bad password denied, and not set off an alarm somewhere? Yeah. Like even Windows locks you out. <laughs> like, Modern day computer security is significantly better than yeah. this. And it's not even like reading your DNA sequence in full to unlock. Yeah. <laughs> iPhones are more secure. This is also wild because at this point we go to like med lab or something. I forget exactly where we're at, but Zach is telling us this security guard was new. This seems really calculated, but doesn't connect it at all to the assassin threat on board. Right? There is no mention in this scene so, of, hmm, I wonder if we could have a problem with this. And and nobody checks out the combat. It's just like, what? It just sticks to the bottom of the box. <laughs> and it's like the next Ugh. scene where we realize that the combat isn't the combat, but it's like, what? Come yeah. on. Come on. Homeschool security. Uh, Sheridan talks to number one, and he's got a he's got a plan to help Mars. But he's got something as dangerous as an idea to do Ugh, it. Barf. <laughs> right. Like, bro, come on. <laughs> come on. 
Like, we know that you're, like, ultra conservative at this point. Like, that's been proven to us in every way on how you operate a government. Uh-huh. So when you're talking about your dangerous idea, I feel like you're about to sit me down at family Thanksgiving and tell me that jet fuel doesn't get hot enough to melt steel beams. That's the vibe of this conversation. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm over season five, Sheridan. Just totally. Yeah. Yeah. At least it wasn't a nuke. Mm. The plot to draw out the assassin is we're going to have a big party for Jakar and Garibaldi and Lise will mm-hmm. be there for some reason. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for some reason, Lise. Who's that? <laughs> and we we start plotting we start planning the celebration we're putting up banners and stuff and mm-hmm. jakar gets confronted by one of his followers about abdicating his duties to them yeah what a jackass yeah for real <laughs> this guy is the worst person in his friend group and they all know yeah. it mm-hmm. he He's the one that gets excluded from the group chat that we have mm-hmm. talked about so much. What an entitled piece of shit. <laughs> He's like the guy selling the Jakar statues, complaining about his money. Oh, that, yeah, that's true. Jakar breaks his statue yeah. because he's the one who says, I made all these. <laughs> yeah. Dumb move. Dumb move. The assassin uh, gets into the private security network and Zach notices the com badge on the victim is fake. Finally. And then knows what that means, right? And we see the assassin like a foot away from Zach uh-huh. as everyone's coming out for this party. And he's like one of two non-narns. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> at this thing. And I'm not saying we have to to stereotype. Yeah. But I am saying Zach Allen does stereotype. Right. And he do, we, he's, he's he we know he racially profiles people, mm-hmm. and the fact that he like this is the one time he doesn't he he racially <laughs> profiles people if they're not human, but these guys are humans. Mm. <laughs> oh yeah, oh oh you're right yeah. though. Mm. Okay, mm. yeah the humans can't be the bad guys at this nine part nine party. And specifically, mm. the assassin is another white male. We've never had that happen. Yes. <laughs> no. <laughs> Has every assassin been a white male human on this show? Like really? Mm. Like the sniper? Like it's it's always it, it's almost always. I think we've had a couple alien dudes. We had that Mimbari mm-hmm. assassin from like the pilot. Right. But every um, human assassin there have been a couple here and has there. at least been male, right? Hmm. I think mm. so. Yeah. Okay. I don't want to yeah. make a blanket statement yeah. in, you know, a hundred whatever episodes of show and then it turns out we're wrong, but I don't know. It's... I don't recall an exception. I will acknowledge that one can exist. Yeah. Fair. I will do the same. Sheridan gives a speech because he has to make Jakar's going away party about him and Garibaldi <laughs> in front of all of these Narn. <laughs> the Narn like, God, you always make it about yourselves, don't you? <laughs> yeah, and they're not wrong. Yep. But the trap works. They set the assassin after the Garibaldi's. They spike his com badge thing so that it's, like, obvious who it is. But Jakar's spurned follower turns assassin and ends up shooting Lise. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we just have, like, some little slapstick comedy up on the dais there of people moving each other around. Yeah. And whoops, we hit Lise. Yep, everyone forgets Lise. And she gets shot. Why is she even there? Like, it's one thing to use Garibaldi as bait, but to use both mm-hmm. of them. It's so didn't dumb. seem super necessary, right? Especially because the assassin is afraid of Garibaldi. They're not afraid of Lise. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, over in MedLab, Lise is not in good condition. Garibaldi takes the assassin Nalita, who doesn't want to be bothered. I missed. I bothered. Uh, but fuck it. You're here. Yeah. Yeah. The only thing that can make Garibaldi feel better when he's in this kind of situation is doing some shady cop shit. That's his favorite. (laughs) Yeah. It's the only way he knows sweet release. The assassin does math in his head to break the scan occupying his mind. I would be so good at this. I would not. (laughs) 
I can't stop my brain from doing math sometimes. Sometimes I just see stuff and start doing math about it in my brain to the surprise of absolutely no one listening. Right, right. Um, I don't mind a little math, but <laughs> I'm a person that I do my best math when I'm writing it, like when I'm feeling it in my hand. And so Lita mm. makes fun of him for forgetting to carry the something. And it's like, damn, that would be me. I would break so fast because I forgot to carry the one. I've spent a lot of time like prepping myself and working on like gut math, uh-huh. like seeing a problem and having the answer without thinking about mm. it. And then I will go and check and make sure that I'm correct. That's like a skill I have tried to train myself to mm-hmm. do. Like I like I will I will glance at a thing and tell you how many there are. It started with just kind of counting and then just doing more and more of that and training my brain to be able to do that allows that kind of math to happen very quickly in my brain. It's a skill though. It's like it's like a thing that I work on yeah. like passively throughout my day. I do think that the way that they're teaching kids math now like as opposed to how I learned it in the 80s to 90s, is trying to mm-hmm. get toward that goal. Like looking at things more relationally and being like, okay, well, if 10 times 10 is this, then 10 times 9 would be, you know, that. Like giving yes. them milestones that they work backward or forward from and get relatively mm-hmm. to the answer, then to the answer a little more intuitively than just like follow a rule all the time. I think that's interesting. I know a lot of people really hate the change to how math is taught, but I'm not one of those people. I already, my whole life, have done math like that, Mm -hmm. just instinctively. That's how I've always done math. I've been on like, okay, well, exactly. If if 7 times 10 is 70, then 7 times 9 is 70 minus Mm 7. Like, just that's how I've always, I've, I, most of the time I go up to the nearest 10 and then work backwards. It's just like how my brain operates. And so when people were trying to explain new math to me and like, and I do mean it in a like very complainy mm-hmm. way, like, oh, this new yes. math, the kids are people getting. People hate it. I'm all like, I, I don't understand what's new. Like, that was my problem is like, what's new about this? Yeah. Like, I don't understand why people are complaining about this because this is literally how I've always done math. Like, do you not? Like the when I learned that people didn't think like that, it was one of those moments where my brain was just all like, "Huh?" Yeah. Like I just can't. I didn't. I get think it. it's a so. it's a thing that some people like intuitively shortcutted to. Like I've definitely used that kind mm-hmm. of logic in different types of math or in different moments, uh, but it wasn't yeah. something I was ever ex- taught to do it that way. And now that I see him, my son, being taught to do it that way, I'm like, "Oh yeah, I I get it. It makes sense." But. Some yeah. people cannot handle it. Yeah. I mean, we're both like effectively professional mathematicians. Yeah. I mean, I do a lot of the basic math, but sure. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it's still like you do math for your job every day, though. Like yeah. you have to understand numbers and their relationships. Yeah. And I do the same thing. I do so much math every day. So I'm looking forward to mm. getting a little more math chops, hopefully in the fall when I start my program. Yeah. I'm excited yeah. for you. I, I'm ready to try again. Do more than just the calculator math. <laughs> we will celebrate in Las Vegas. Huzzah. So uh, Lita finds out that it's the entire Edgar's Industries board that ordered this hit. And this did not surprise me. They did it as a big group. I like wrote in my yeah. notes at when we first discussed this assassin of possibility, number one, after the theme starts talking about it, I was like, so it's Edgar's Industries, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> The calls coming from inside of course, the house. like where yeah. where else? It doesn't make sense, right? Jakar packs up as Sheridan comes in to say goodbye, and man, this episode in particular made me really feel like JMS had a bunch of post-it notes all over his yeah. desk about poetic shit Jakar could say, and just like, oh, gotta include this one, gotta include <laughs> this, one. like last chance, guys, just like grabbing everything he can, especially because like Jakar leaves at the end of this episode. Mm-hmm. I don't believe he's in the next episode and sleeping in light was filmed a year ago. Sleeping in light was filmed at the end of season Mm. four. So this is his actual last chance to use any cool Jakar lines he's come up with. And this episode is just Jakar poetic banger after banger. Yeah. Yeah. I think that he also had posted notes of who was going to be on vacation and when, because Sheridan makes sure to tell us that (laughs) Delenn can't be here right now because Mira Furlan must be doing something. (laughs) 
Uh, yeah, too bad. Yep. Oh, did you notice? I don't remember who had it in the scene or why why I saw it, but there's definitely a Jakar Jesus painting. Are we in Jakar's <laughs> quarters? Maybe I don't know, but there's like a a painting where it looks a lot like a painting of Jesus that you would see in a Midwestern church in the 90s. Like, can you picture that? I know exactly. No, I'm. I know exactly. But what you it is mean. Jakar, and I was like, man, if there is only one prop I could have from this show, that is up there <laughs> on the list. I really want Jakar Jesus. <laughs> That'd be fun. I I do have the one. The one. I don't. It's not an actual show use right. prop, but I have a the Sinclair aircraft. Yeah. that's a pretty good office. get too. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Ben. That was a gift from him. Uh, Lise is waking up. And I don't know, this is like a weird little ICU set because like Garibaldi's like slumped over in like an office chair and every, every room I've ever been in like this with someone recovering, the chair was also a recliner, Mm. like not a big recliner, but definitely something that could lean back that you could sleep in. I just, I don't know. Seems like a good way to spend some money Babylon 5. (laughs) Garibaldi decides that he wants to get married right now and lise is totally fucked up on anesthesia and painkillers and this is so fucking illegal (laughs) it seems like a great time to sign legally binding documents yeah (laughs) like lise is medically unable to consent at this moment and they are getting hitched even though i thought they did at the end of season really did too i could have sworn i'm ready to go back and rewatch it just to find out (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I thought like she was calling him like he was calling her Mrs. Mrs. Garibaldi and stuff. Like there was some implication there. I thought that they had gotten like runaway church married by an Elvis on Mars. Yeah, but me too. I don't know. I don't get it. <laughs> yeah, it's it's so weird and illegal. Um, Jakar's ship is super small. There's no separate bedrooms on this guy. <laughs> At best, you can hope for here is bunk beds. Uh-huh. Uh, hopefully, this Winnie has a full bath at least so they can shower without having to stop at gas stations. I bet it does have a shower and a bathroom, but instead of beds, the chairs where you're like in the cockpit, those are the reclining chairs. That's where they're at. Uh, and you know, it's too small for artificial gravity, too. Yeah. Mm. Uh, you're in those chairs. You never leave those chairs. That's got to be bad. You have to take those shots for your. Your blood flow for your legs. Get your compression socks and leggings. Yeah, sure. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. We see Zach watch Alita leave. Yeah. Okay. Right. Fuck off, dude. The show wants to remind us that, hey, we tried to do something here and it didn't work. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, We cut over to Garibaldi and the board of Edgar's Meeting via Zoom. And they just want us to know. Meeting via Zoom, and they just want to let us know that the assassin just totally Epstein, guys. There's nothing to see here. Yeah, so weird. Just, just totally, just killed himself. You know, left a note admitting all blame for everything. No one else. There's no investigation required. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the head of this board is a literal fat cat. We've picked a portly gentleman <laughs> for this. I think he's even smoking yeah. a cigar. He yeah. is inside. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, he looks like a Looney Tunes caricature of a board. Yeah, of a rich person. A board member, 100%. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Garibaldi reveals he has a ton of dirt on the board and that number one is taking over as the head of Interstellar Alliance Intelligence. A real professional. Imagine that. Right. <laughs> All it took was you fucking up so much. Yeah. Yeah. You were buddies with the president, but you fucked it up. And failed upwards to something else. So now we get a competent woman to handle it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, P.S. Don't come at me or you'll get got. Yeah. Franklin and number one have a celebratory dinner and dessert. I'll have what she's having. Mm-hmm. They're cute. I kind of like them. Is that bad? <laughs> no. I mean, there's. it's not like, I mean... Franklin has made some dubious decisions, Mm -hmm. but I am not concerned about number one's ability to say no in any Mm -hmm. way that Franklin will not recognize. Like, she is a strong woman who's going to tell him, uh, call him on his bullshit consistently. 
which is what yeah, he needs that, in his life. As you were talking, I'm like, who, this is exactly what she or what he needs. Yeah. Yeah. To be a better person is someone like her in his mm-hmm. life. So. Yeah. She will tell him when to knock it the fuck yeah. off. Okay. I don't feel so bad about it anymore. <laughs> no. She, she can also just beat the shit mm-hmm. out of him. I'll so. say that. Hey, Mira Furlan's schedule finally cleared up. We yeah. get Mira Furlan back for a moment. Yep. Delenn returns to the station just in time to say goodbye to Alfredo, who opens like like he should have, like, I don't know, seasons ago. <laughs> and John and Delenn decide to walk the five miles of the station to credits. Now is all we have. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. How would you feel about this one on our patented scale of Babylon's one to five? The best part of this episode to me is the last moment where Delenn is saying, now is all we have, like, and they're going to take a walk at the station. I'm like, yeah, that that feels mm-hmm. good. The rest of it, I don't know. It's just kind of eh for me. Of course, Jakar being poetic is wonderful. I love that. Don't oh. love Garibaldi and Lise. Ready to see that go. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is just really average for me. I can't give it better than a three. I also give this one a three. Yeah. It's just, I can tell we've got to get our pieces wrapped up and our ends tied away. And, you know, we've got to send Jakar and Lita off so maybe they can come back during Crusade, perhaps. And Yeah, eventually, probably not. I don't think they get enough episodes, yeah. but I don't remember. No, but I think that maybe there maybe was we'll an intent that like, oh, if we can get three seasons out of this, maybe they'll come back, you know. Yeah. I don't know. I was just like, uh, this isn't super satisfying for me. It's fine. No. It's fine. It's fine. A lull now makes the sleeping in the light even better, to be perfectly mm-hmm. honest. Yeah. Well, before we get to that, we have next week's episode, Objects at Rest. The end of 2262 brings many changes to Babylon 5. A missed farewells and new beginnings. Disaster strikes. As Sheridan and Delenn travel to their new home, Mimbar, where the Alliance headquarters is located. We do have a guest next week as well. Uh, Scott from Gray 17 is going to be joining us. Hopefully. We still have to work out the schedule on that, but ideally Scott will Mm -hmm. be joining us. Yeah. I'm excited about that. And this is the last episode of Babylon 5 that they made. Yeah, I guess it is because Sleeping in Light was made in season four. Yeah. I had... I came just from recording last time uh-huh. on, and while we were waiting for Victor to get on, Ben, knowing that I was recording this episode, was all like, did you guys record Sleeping in Light a year ago? Oh, that would have been good. <laughs> That's what I said. <laughs> Nuts. Well, you know, my husband has never right? seen it, so that would have been, I don't know, Ooh, a little yeah. out of the intended mm. order. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. There's a reason we didn't, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah there we go we found it <laughs> take that thanks ben. <laughs> Aaron. <laughs> all right well with all that said i guess we'll just we'll see you next uh-huh. week let's uh thanks jeremy siegel you're welcome for our lovely theme music we really appreciate it uh, you can find more of jeremy's work at jeremy siegel42.bandcamp.com on spotify as nuclear jaguar or on numerous bands that he's joined i don't know if there's any recordings but if you live in the panhandle of florida you can go see him I think live. he's actually down in the isn't gainesville in like the body of florida now or <laughs> gainesville would have always been no. in the body of florida no gainesville yeah. moved gainesville used to be jacksonville and then they got up yeah and moved. no um, jeremy moved no, I was not in the state of florida <laughs> i confused my florida cities <laughs> Oops. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, Gainesville, if you want to see Jeremy yeah. catch the savants of soul, or I think he's been with the late night losers as well. Both great names. He's, he's been, he's mm-hmm. busy. Yeah. Busy guy doing great. More power to him. Indeed. And thank you to Angry Duck Time Machine on Instagram for our podcast artwork. Thanks, Aaron, for editing this podcast. We made this one tough yeah, on you. Again. Oops. Again. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> And thank you to you, the listener, for being here and finishing out Babylon 5 with us. Uh, It's probably too late for your Season 5 thoughts, but we can't wait to share with you our Season 5 thoughts here in just a couple of weeks. No, no, we're super behind on recording. So actually, if if you're listening to this on release day, you still have time. Oh, yeah, that's true. Season 5 thoughts, (laughs) because we're very behind right now. 
Um, but we've gotten a handful in. Really appreciate everyone who's submitted them so mm -hmm. far. Uh, send them over email, who are you, b5 at gmail.com. Send them over on the Discord. Yeah. Or I guess on Facebook if you really yeah. want. We, we, we have a We're Facebook. We're there. We'll find you. We'll find it. Thanks. Or uh, Twitter or Blue Sky are also getting posted on these days, so you can send a message yeah. over there. We'd love it. We'll All see right. you next week. We'll, we'll see you next week, Internet. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye.